Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Matt Johnson. We are back with another edition of Real Estate Uncensored. This is the place where you get actionable ideas, insight, and inspiration to turn your real estate career into a life of freedom. And we're going to talk to someone who has done just that and exactly how he got there and how he built his team and the transition from being a solo agent over to being a team leader with, I think, 12 freaking people on his team, <laughs> uh, all done within about the last year, year and a half or so. So we're going to talk to him about that. We'll get to him in a second. But for now, uh, I will commence my duties as Greg Wrangler. <laughs> <laughs> your friendly uh, Greg Wrangler, and I will bring in my uh, my co-host, the junior grandmaster himself, Greg McDaniel. What's up, Matt? What is up, dude? Uh, man, it is a beautiful, beautiful rainy Friday right outside the window behind me. I'm super excited. I love rainy days. Uh, kind of make you feel like you want to get under a blanket, get a get a cocktail or a cu cup of cocoa or something, and watch a movie with a loved one. But you know what? Today I'm going to have a little bit of a rant about this dickwad that I had a call with. I uh, was on a call with yesterday. I mean, he was a dickosaurus. Um, it was it was incredible the the rudeness that came out of this man's voice. And I made a decision when I was doing my calls that I want everybody to do the same thing. When you run across a cocksucker such as him, and he tries to demean you, put you down, push you around, and try to you know bully you from the very beginning, you tell him to kick rocks, and you never look back. I told that man straight up. No, I'm not going to use the F-bomb this early in the show. I told him to go, you know, go away and not come back in very uncertain terms. And your reason why is because you guys are, every one of you guys are professionals. And you guys need to be, treat yourself as professionals and so that other people will treat you as professionals. If you allow a dickhead to push you around, they're going to push you around through the whole transaction. It's going to bring down your, your whole mental mindset. So you guys are all better than that. So if I can put, you know, put, you know, tell a, you know, a million plus dollar listing to go kick sand, you guys can go kick sand because your reputation and your mindset is more worth it. Hmm. Okay, now, <clears throat> now I have one, one small question about your mindset uh, when you're going oh. through this, Greg. Yes, Matt. W were you wearing the gold jacket? <laughs> <laughs> this is the gold standard, bitch. <laughs> they give this to closers. They yeah. give this to closers. <laughs> the jackets for closers. Jack is for closers. <laughs> All right, so for anybody that's listening to us on iTunes or Stitcher, Greg is wearing what can only be described as what appears to me to be a Century 21 gold jacket from 1978. And really? And I, I have to, yeah, I have to mock him mercilessly for that. Well, Matt, because I'm older and wiser than you, that, that means that when you got the jacket in 1978, it was a sign of, of a high standard. So I dusted this bitch off, brought it up into the you know, 21st century, and here I am looking good. Uh -huh. Gold. All right. Rules. Yeah. Gold, gold like honey. All right. Gold so let's like bring honey. in our special guest, and maybe he can help me uh, mock you mercilessly. Oh, for your shut jacket. your That'd face. Awesome. Lee Barrison. Lee, how's it going, man? Good, Matt. Thanks. <laughs> we are we are so excited to have you. Uh, so you've been uh, you you keep up with the show. You also keep up with Josh Smith's show. You've been on Josh Smith's show, yeah. and you talk about kind of your your turnaround as an individual agent. We'll get to that. Um, but uh, yeah, so we we've talked like off the show, and finally it's like why why are we not bringing you on the show yet? It doesn't make any sense. So I rectified yeah. that horrible oversight. Thank uh, you, Matt. Josh. Shame on you. Exactly. Shame, see, <laughs> it's turning around. Now Lee and I are going to come after you. Double barrels, oh, Ben. Double yeah, barrels. bring my gold jacket next time I show up, by the way, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's All right, I'm going to awesome. be happy with my black jacket over here, which uh, yeah. I don't know what that means about me. Apparently, uh, apparently closers, because that's what the gold jacket's for. That's right. Closers, yeah. closers, right. closers, closers. So, uh, so Lee, give, us, uh, give everyone the 60-second uh, bio on who you are, where you are, and what you do. Sure. Uh, Lee Barrison. Uh, I work for a local brokerage here in the lovely town of Bakersfield, California, just about an hour and a half north of Los Angeles. Um, been in the business for about 14 years. Um, you know, love the business. Got a small team I'm working with right now, and we are slowly growing as I speak. So, Did you say well, small? Small, quite small. Yeah, like small, dude. Uh, small is like two, and yeah. you need to put a one in front of that, too. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Yeah, uh, with 12 agents on the team. Um, you know, we've also got a full-time operations manager, transaction, listing coordinator, um, and a full-time marketing guy on the team too. So cool. that's awesome, man. So you get you really kind of you're building this as a business, not as a hobby. I mean, you're you're a year yeah. deep and you're already crushing it. Yeah. Um, gosh, I mean, you know, listening to a lot of podcasts, listening to you guys, um, uh, Greg Harrelson. You know, you guys had a great yeah. interview with him at uh, just the other day. Listen to that. You know, it's it's so much more of a business nowadays than it used to be in my mind. You know, I think 14 years ago, I never even thought about being in this position. I just thought I was going to sell real estate till the day I died, but that's not the case anymore. So, yeah, it's very true. When I got into the business 17 years ago, I didn't want to get into it because it was my 
dad's business. You know, it was old guy stuff. It wasn't a real job. And, you know, it's, it's, it's totally morphed. I mean, 17 years ago, a team was like, look down and laugh at like, Oh, yeah. a team when he needs help, that little bitch. And he's like, no, 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 no. The little bitch is the guy who's grinding away day in and day out and grinding his little nuggets down to the, the little stubs because he's working, you know, on both ends of the, of the day, you know, middle of the night to middle of the afternoon and so on and so forth. But now you've leveraged your time. I mean, now you have time to come on and hang out with us on fun, fun, fun podcasts. Yeah. There right? you go. Well, you, you know, know I mean, with your family. Yeah, honestly, leverage is one part of it, Greg. But I got to tell you, I mean, I, I really, really uh, embrace the um, being the person to, to uh, create value for others, you know, and, and really see them grow, which I, I got to tell you, I, I almost enjoy seeing other people's, uh, you know, other people win and make money versus myself in the business. Now, so it is, it is incredibly fun. I will I'll piggyback on that. I was talking to one of my good friends, Neely, last night. She's sick of the dog. She and I are supposed to talk. Um, but she, uh, she guys, she, she's her first year, month full time agent, gotten a rookie of the uh, in the office, got six listings in one month. Oh, nice. watching what we're doing. And you know, applying stuff, wow. and you know, the, exactly what you talked about, man. It's that little like, like the since I'm not a dad, it's like the coach buttons are like ping, 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 just popping off. I'm like, yeah, hey, what's up? What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, no doubt. It, it is an amazing thing because when people start to live the lives of their dreams, and you played maybe a small little role in it, but then you watch them flourish and grow. They grow their wings, they jump out of the nest, and they fly on their own, and they're happy. And then you're like, dude, that's awesome. What if I didn't put any love into them? What if I did stay stay selfish and stayed just producing for my team? They wouldn't have been able to do that. I wonder where they would have been because the ripple effects of your one actions, Lee, is going to have profound effects on hundreds, if not thousands of people around you that you will maybe never know, but the people that you see every day, you'll be able to see the joy in their face. And that Dude, is worth it. Couldn't agree with you more, Greg. Absolutely. Yeah, and that comes from the gold, that comes from the gold jacket, Matt. That's how <laughs> I <laughs> just <laughs> <from the> gold. <laughs> Yeah, You're speaking with so much more wisdom today. Almost Greg, as if you look 20 years older, I don't know what's going oh. on. <laughs> All right. Lord. So there's a couple questions. We'll start off with that caught my eye off the lead gen scripts and objections, Facebook group. And if you guys aren't members, go there and join there uh, immediately. And, immediately. Uh, immediately. Do not wait. Go do it right now while we're on the show. And then the if you have show. any questions during the show, message me. So I'm Matt Johnson. You can actually just type in facebook.com slash pursuing results. Takes you right to my page. Uh, you can message me during the show and we'll bring your questions. But uh, so Matt Sutherland asks, with the market shifting, what are going to be the top outbound sources for listings? Uh, so Greg, let's start with you as, as things, because you've noticed the shift in your market. Uh, does that change anything for you in terms of how the source of your listings or how you go about generating listing leads for yourself? No. Well, not for us, Matt. I'll, I'll say that for our team, what we, we're kind of honing in on and what we're identifying is our most valuable time spent to acquire listings. Dude, it's my ass in this seat right here with that phone right there making phone calls with Mojo, Triple Line Dialer, Midori in this seat, Eileen in that seat doing calls, Chris out doing his mobile marketing, as we call it, which is him on wearing spandex, wearing his, on his bike. Um, <laughs> he hates that. <laughs> but that freaking you know, outfit, you know, spandex, spandex and tiny little tires generates a shit ton of business for our team. Then my father just out there being around the people he's been around for the last 30 plus years here in the neighborhoods. You know, it's a belly to belly business for us in our market. We have, we just hired an ISA uh, team out of Sacramento that if they do what they say they can do, it's going to be an absolute game changer for us. They, we sent them 123 lead, buyer leads yesterday. They already set a, their first appointment for us uh, for Tuesday. And we're going to give them a couple thousand cold leads. So it's going to be maybe integrating them, but it's also just going to be staying persistent and consistent in regards to what has made money for you in the past. Don't go chasing the shiny object because if you chase every little thing, you're never gonna get really good and go a mile deep instead of a mile wide. A mile wide is not gonna get you and keep you and sustain you for long term. It's gonna might get you a deal here and there, but it's not gonna be what you really want. So stay true to what's made you money, sit down and write it out, figure it out, analyze every single deal, buyer and seller, and then double down on each one of those opportunities that you have. That's how if when the market shifts, you stay, con you stay uh, continuously doing what's made you money, you'll continue to make money, unless it's like standing on a, on a street corner wearing like a, a sign, like an A-frame sign wearing in your knickers. <laughs> That's not gonna work out so well. <laughs> a, sandwich, a sandwich sign. <laughs> All right, so, uh, so Lee, what about you? What's, what are you guys' typical lead sources for listings, and does that change when the market starts to shift? Like, do you go after foreclosures, REOs, stuff like that? 
No, I, you know, well, first off, I would never suggest anybody go after REO because then you have just lost control of your business. You know, I mean, you're, you're now the employee of, of a bank, but, um, <clears throat> you know, I, I think that, uh, gosh, I mean, um, the, the, nothing's ever changed in real estate. I think, you know, in today's society, there's so much, so many ideas, so much golden or so many shiny objects, so many things out there mm-hmm. that, uh, uh, take our attention off of the the belly to belly that Greg was talking about. You know, yeah. picking up the phone, uh, you know, and being consistent, which is most important, I think, in a changing market. I think the cha- the market's changed here too with me, Greg. Um, really? Yeah. Uh, but you know, again, nothing's changed, and and uh, you know, uh, real estate it's very cyclical, and in the in whatever cycle, whether it's going up, whether it's going down, you got to stick with the basics and you know, pick up the phone and start dialing you know, and get belly to belly with as many people as you can. And you're not going to lose. No, you're, you're, you're not going to lose. And if you guys were going to like, well, gosh, Greg and, and, and Matt and Lee, I want to do something new and different and exciting. Okay. Then let's, let's do high tech, high touch. Anyone who's listened to me and Matt talk about the 60 day challenge, you know, go out and be around people. This mm-hmm. thing, we all have them. They're called a business card. Mm-hmm. You can hand out mine if you want to, um, but you hand out 25 of those a day, but you put it on social media where you're going to be. That's a new shiny object with being belly to belly with people. But you, you, I mean, I, I got complimented uh, Lee and, and Matt yesterday by a couple there that uh, we just brought on in a city called Livermore. Dude, they were almost near freaking tears when I did a, I showed them how to do a Zillow video, two minute little video, and I did a Facebook live about their home. I mean, they lost their marbles and were so thankful for it because I brought the high tech to them, but I still was there doing the high touch and interfacing with them, holding the broker's tour, door knocking around the property and everything else. So, I mean, Lee, in your marketplace, wouldn't you agree that blending something, you know, high tech and high touch is very important, but never losing never losing uh, sight of your high touch aspect? 100%, Greg. I mean, you know, the fundamentals and the basics are the phone and, you know, mm-hmm. uh, door knocking or whatever. And... I think one one other important facet of the changing market is really diving deep into your skills and being a skill based agent versus a lucky yeah. agent. So, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, but definitely mix it up. You know, um, uh, you know, there's things out there that are free, like you know, uh, Facebook Live that you can mix yeah. in, blend into your business, let people know because um, you're able to touch you know thousands of people in ten minutes yeah. with this versus that one, you know, one time dial at a time. So definitely. I couldn't, I could not agree with you more. Right, this is something Lee that I actually started yesterday. Um, and I'm going and I would go over there and show you, but I, that would make me not near the mic and Matt would, that would break Matt's heart if he couldn't hear my voice. Um, <laughs> uh, but what Sorry, I'm doing I just, is I just choked on my water a little bit. That's okay. <laughs> I mean, you just threw up a little bit like, Oh, um, but no, seriously, what I'm doing is I'm going to realtytimes.com and I'm going to be doing Facebook lives. I did a recorded yesterday. I didn't get the views I wanted. So I'm going to do a Facebook live, um, regurgitating an article out about buyers, sellers, homeowners, HOA, new homes, and rental advice, one video a day so that I can, when I meet people at the open houses, like you like you meet people at open houses, Lee, and your team does, you can say, if they want to get to know you or your team, they can say, you can say, hey, go to my Facebook page, check out my video library. It'll answer a lot of questions about a lot of different aspects of the whole, of the whole transaction. So that's what, that's my high tech thing that I'm bringing in and also doing pop buys and that kind of a stuff and that kind of a thing. So that's a, I think Lee and I just crushed it. We can turn the podcast off here. I mean, shit. Be, <laughs> Lee, you my question rain. is, do you take the gold jacket when you do that pop buy? Cause that's <laughs> right there, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I do today. I am just, I'm going to videotape myself. See bitches. I'm in front of the freaking house. That's mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Uh, oh, thank Lord. you, Lee, for that. That made that that made me a little uh yeah warm oh warm fuzzies inside. I appreciate God. that. All right, so uh, <laughs> <laughs> there there was another question that caught my eye, and because you've you've overcome this challenge or you've you've been through at least. So somebody asked like, what what's the best CRM, and <clears throat> both for individual and small teams. So tell me what like what you used when you were a solo agent versus what you guys use now. What was that transition like? Sure. Um, you know, top producer, I think is one of the, the basic, the, the old, you know, the old school, uh, CRM that's never gone away and it's, it's been, uh, reliable. Um, so top producer as a single agent was real helpful for me at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, I also used a, a system called my real estate tools. Um, it's a cheaper version of top producer, like 30, 40 bucks a month, but it does a lot of the things that you want a CRM to do. You know, so it's got the drip campaigns, 
uh, mailing campaigns, to dos, and and all that good stuff. So, um, as a single agent, those are the two that I've always used, Matt. Um, once the team uh, came into effect, though, uh, we jumped into the Boomtown scenario about two or three years ago. So since then, Boomtown it's pretty robust, I guess, as you probably know, um, and uh, and the team uh, uses the Boomtown system now. So, gotcha. And what was the uh, so when you're switching over from from your older system over to Boomtown, what were some of the growing pains or learning that you had to go through to pull that off successfully? Well, at, at, in the beginning, Boomtown was so robust. I mean, it took forever to learn, um, you know, so that was one of the growing pains, you know, uh, actually diving deep into Boomtown. I hate diving deep into new software and stuff like that because it takes away from my OCD. And so, um, <laughs> you know, so that was that was painful on its own. But, you know, I, I think that, uh, you know, jumping from a one man uh, band, I guess is the best way to put it, into a, a robust uh, system like Boomtown where it has so many levels that you could take it. Um, uh, you know, it was just time. I guess the, the time that, that I had to invest was the most painful part. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Time and, and the, the mental effort, the mental burden yes. involved in, in diving deep into something like that. Yeah. I'm, I'm the same way. I would, I don't want to dive into that stuff. I mean, I've got HubSpot for myself, which is great, super robust. You can do all kinds of stuff with it. And it's the same way. I just I dread any time that I have to spend with it, but I know that in the end it will pay off and all that stuff. But yeah, it's it's like you have to definitely say, look, if I'm going to do this, I have to definitely and specifically take blocks of time on my calendar, and mm -hmm. it has to be devoted to learning it because otherwise it just won't get done. It's not something you will like. Like email just kind of seems to get done. It just you just <clears throat> you do it. You do it in the cracks of other stuff. You can't do this with learning a new CRM or software or whatever it is. I think that's where a lot of people make that mistake is they go, well, I don't want to jump to the next level. I want to run with the big dogs and the big dogs are all using this. Yeah, but the big dogs got that way probably not because of that. This is an app this is a a trailing indicator of their yes. success. Mm -hmm. It's not a leading indicator. Agreed. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, uh, you know, also Matt, you know, it's, it's so Boomtown, it's not necessarily cheap, right? So I think my impression when I first signed up with Boomtown is it's so expensive, it's going to run itself. It's like a, a self-driving vehicle. You know? and, and that wasn't the case, you know, yeah. so. Yeah, definitely. Definitely, definitely not. And uh, by the way, Greg, how are things going with uh, the FirePoint implementation as long as we're talking about CRMs? Uh, it's going well. Uh, there's a few things and hiccups, and that's the whole reason why we're doing this whole implementation. We're working out the kinks and the bugs in it. So I'm talking, working with Chris, working with a few other folks, you know, to work out a few things. But other than the few just blatantly obvious things that, you know, anyone can find as a third party view, you know, looking in, it's got a tremendous amount of value. Uh, it's very, 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 very powerful. So I'm looking forward to really launching it and really pressing go with it as soon as we get it all hammered out. And there's some exciting things coming down the pipe with that with a few other aspects that I can talk to you off air about I can't do it on air. But overall, Good stuff, man. I'm really pumped about it right now. How dare you hold back on me? All right. I won't hold back with you. I can't share with the rest of the world, man. <laughs> All right, good. All right, well, let's uh, let's mention a couple of things. Greg, you can shout out to a couple of people, and then I want to dive into Lee's story and how he's built in, uh, his team, and then how he runs it and operates it, holds people accountable, converts leads, all that good stuff. I'm excited to get into that stuff. So, uh, so first of all, take a look at Elite Real Estate System, Elite uh, McDaniel Real Estate Systems yeah. .com. I know. Get your I, podcast I, I right. just did a podcast with Jeff uh, <laughs> this morning, but anyway, uh, <laughs> which, by the way, go check that out. Go to Elite Real Estate Systems .com and you can <laughs> check out the podcast that uh, that Lee briefly mentioned, the one with Greg Harrelson. Uh, we just released that yesterday. Greg is phenomenal. Um, I'm working on a new podcast yes, series with him, which is going to be freaking kick ass. And uh, so that's going to be exciting. So check out that episode with Greg Harrelson. He's always, he's been a, a past guest on this show as well. And uh, anyway, but yeah, so results, Daniel Real Estate so. Systems for our, for, for our website, you can get two things. So number one is the Greg's favorite scripts which is all of his best scripts for everything from lead conversion to uh, working with clients like price reduction scripts and stuff like that. Each one of those scripts has a link to a video where I sat Greg down in a chair and I made him go through the scripts one by one. It was very <laughs> painful for him. It was excruciating. And we actually... Structure! No! Yes, I know. No when do you plan on moving? <laughs> <laughs> and that's the script. There it is. That's right. That's right. That's uh, yeah, so it was just like that. No, it was, uh, it was... He actually did a very good job. You can hear the phrasing. You can hear the tonality of how the script is supposed to be delivered because that's... What is that? About 70% of it? Body language and, uh, and tone? Yeah. No, yeah. it really is. I mean, yesterday I was doing my cold calls and I got a guy who, who uh, by the name of Scott, who I'm going on a CMA today. Um, 
and it was all everyone like you could you could feel like the <gasps> on the air when everyone they're like he's got a live one what's he gonna do and uh, <laughs> he's got a live one <laughs> is he gonna screw it up or take it to, take it take it home like, uh, hang on hang on get oh, it's, a, it's a marlin no it's uh but uh what i did is i just i slowed my tempo down on my speech and i acted very calm and collected and well what would work best for you and blah 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 i'm not like oh my god matt julie your three obese babies oh my god can i come over tomorrow i'm on the way i'm gonna bring out i'm in i'm in the car i just have my cell phone oh my god hey, that's me knocking i'm here <laughs> <laughs> So now wait a minute. Now is this because you you kind of cold read the personality of the person on the phone and figured they were like a high C, or you just were you just no. mirror matching? I just mirrored a match. I mean, I automatically go from like super hyper hyperactive guy to very calm, collected, relaxed, not attached to the outcome. I mean, of course, you, you, your balls get all you get all sucked up in there. Right when you ask them, so you thinking about buying? Can I come by and take a look? <gasps> yeah, you can. Oh, oh thank you. All okay, right. good. But yeah, no, it's all about that's the tonality that I'm talking about. And uh, we're going to update that, Matt. You don't know this, but we need to sit down. We need to add some more scripts to this and stuff. And right. we need to add some more stuff to the prospecting um, package that you guys can go and buy. Yes, um, that's, that's, the, that's the whole training course. I was going to mention that. So that was like eight hours of content. That was a ridiculous amount of me sitting across with Greg and pulling pulling everything out of his brain, squeezing it like a, like a mandarin orange and uh, just getting it all, all the goodness out, everything from cold to warm to hot outbound prospecting, events, Zillow, how to pick your geographic form or demographic form and all kinds of stuff. So anyway, McDanielRealEstateSystems.com. Check those two things out. And then, Greg, who do you have to uh, shout out today? Dude, it's epic. Okay, we'll talk about this later, guys. But the McDaniel Challenge is – I had 35 people sign up for it in the last two days. Uh, so I have <laughs> – here we go. Uh, Mr. Darcy, Robert, uh, TJ, Farley, Howard, uh, Mark, Chris, Malik, uh, John, uh, Arne for the second time, Vicky, uh, let's go back to August, uh, July. Hey, come here, bitch. Um, sorry. Uh, Chad, Estrada, the gold jacket Chad, is distracting me. Larry, Tony, Juan, uh, Adam, John, Amy, and Linda, Jason, and G. <coughs> And so I, I, there's more of you guys in there, more of you guys that have reached out. I just love talking to you guys. Thank you so much. Keep them coming. Um, I just, I can't, I can't get to them all because otherwise we're going to stay here for the rest of the show. But <laughs> you guys are amazing. We'll talk about the McDaniel challenge at the end, guys. It's free coaching. Stick around. I'll explain it to you guys. But seriously, sign up or you will literally be somewhere in the 2018 category, which is epically ridiculously awesome. It's insane, man. All right. All right. So Lee, let's, let's dive into your story a little bit. So, t so take me back. Um, there's a, uh, like the first six months or something, you had just nothing, nothing going on, like nothing, nothing happening until you hit a certain, a certain mindset shift. So take us back to, uh, to that. What, what time period was this? And, uh, and what was the process of change and kind of getting on track a, as a solo agent? Sure. Um, you know, we, uh, when I started 14 years ago, Matt, it, just like on the Josh Smith interview, um, you know, basically uh, for the first six months, had zero business. Uh, in my six month in the business, I went to a, uh, to a Mike Ferry seminar and I, I noticed a lot of the people that were there that were high producers had real estate coaches. Um, I didn't know what a real estate coach was, but I figured hey, if, if, uh, if it's good for them, it's good for me. Um, and so I hired a coach and then, uh, the next six months we, uh, I think I closed, uh, 28 transactions my first year in real estate. So nice. Yeah, first year was 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 a good learning curve, but it also taught me the importance of coaching. Um, you know, I've been. So was it? Do you think it was a matter of getting you to do the right daily activities, or was it a mindset and a confidence thing? Like, what was the key difference? Just with what did the coach bring out in you? Yeah, I think he he taught me how to become a professional salesperson. You know, okay. um, you know the the scripts, the dialogue, the the schedule, the the follow up, everything behind what what you're supposed to do. Uh, that the normal doesn't do is what he taught me, and it really taught me the importance of uh, of how to how to become a salesperson. You know. Well, let's dig into the the daily schedule a little bit, and you maybe compare and contrast what you do now versus what you did as a solo as a solo agent. But when you first started working on your daily schedule, what what did that look like? Sure, it was all time blocked. Um, you know, so the first, uh, you know, eight o'clock would be my arrival time or seven thirty. But 
Uh, there would always be a half an hour role play once I get to the office uh, to warm up and, and practice the scripts. Um, any, uh, every time, or I'm sorry, every day at 8.30, I would jump on the phones, and that time would also be time blocked between 8.30 to 11.30 or 12. Mm -hmm. uh, lunch would be time blocked for one hour. Mm -hmm. uh, Follow-up time would be time blocked from uh, typically one to two. Preparation time would be between two and three, and three to six, it's appointment time. Um, and so keeping that schedule, that regimen, you know, I think it's similar to just having a normal job. You know, when you show up and you, I don't know, if you're at Burger King, you know, you got to show up, you got to clean the tables, you got to flip the burgers at this certain time. And, um, and it learned that schedule taught me how to run my, my business like a real business. So, and that's, that's actually one of the things that I, I did as well, Lee, is I, I time blocked everything. I live and die by my schedule. I mean, mm -hmm. I check it every morning. Um, I make sure that I know exactly what's going on. Um, and that actually tackles into a question really quickly, um, that we actually got from Ismail, uh, who hit me up. He's, uh, watching us live right now. He wanted to ask this question. Um, oh, damn it. Where'd it go? Uh, I want to know what were some of the most challenging things, uh, Lee, you faced in building a 12 man team? Well, um, uh, finding the right talent, I think Ishmael was, you know, one of the issues, you know, we, um, I think when, you know, the, the old KW, uh, model says be slow to hire and quick to fire. Um, you know, in the beginning I was quick to hire. Uh, and, uh, so at, you know, in the very beginning stages, it was, uh, I learned the fact that, you know, being slow and just hiring the right talent as we go is more important than anything else. It really is. I mean, hiring the right people. We had one dickhead that we actually <laughs> had to pay, you know, $800 to leave. He was such a cock. I mean, yeah. he, he, he was just, he was like, he was, he was horrible. So, and we, we, he did a great interview. We didn't hire him. We didn't fire him fast enough, unfortunately. Yeah, I, money. I also had that experience at yeah. uh, at at Viral. Yeah, I tried to hire my replacement, and yeah, uh, yeah I hired somebody that used to work for. Um, he had an MBA, and he used to work for the company. It was uh, oh, I did just the name escaped me for a second. It was Chet Holmes Company. Oh, so really? He had spent, he had, yeah, so he had worked with small business owners, coming up with their marketing narrative and delivering marketing reports about their competition, their industry, and whatever to help them position themselves in the market correctly and tell a better story about their business. I'm like, well, this is freaking perfect. Awesome. <laughs> oh, little did I know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, the Antichrist raised his head. A month, and then he sued us for firing him because he was so What? Bad. Wow. Yeah. It's yeah, like it's like it's like he was probably a kid that got an award just for going to the soccer game, huh? What? I don't get to see this job. Something. I got two legs, man. Yeah, I it was, do it was something like that. Yeah. So that and that's pretty. Lee, that's pretty common. Just I mean, that's something that we all have to go through as we, you know, like when you first take your first steps into hiring someone, you're just like, oh my god, give me a body, and if you've got half a brain, uh, sure. I can just show you what to do, and then you realize, uh, no, that's like like not even anywhere near close to good enough. And then you back off and you're like, all right, I got to reevaluate literally everything that I do. And I have to have yes. a system for hire. I have a system for finding them. I got to have a system for training them. And yeah. so many systems. Craig just jumped out the window. I did. Right. I almost just, I almost just X'd out, X'd out of the, uh, the podcast. Like, you say system one more time, pal. And that's it. Take up <laughs> a friendship card and tear it up. We're done. done. Uh, all right. Well, let's get back to the, uh, the also, daily schedule hold thing hold as far on, as on, like how on. you run your team. Hold on, did you... hold, on, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We got one more question that just popped in and it, and it gets good. We're right along yeah, what we're talking about. I have a here. question that's more important. Oh, shush. <laughs> okay. So did you, uh, um, Lee, did you hire using the MREA models as an assistant? Buyer agent, assistant, listing agent, etc. Um, and which one was your first hire? An assistant, buyer's agent, or seller or a listing agent? Great question. So my first assistant, I'm sorry, my first hire was an executive assistant. Uh, she's still with me today. Um, uh, and I, I prospected her. So uh, my, my real estate coach at the time told me, listen, your first hire has to be your best hire. So um, <clears throat> he had me identify that person. Uh, mm -hmm. which I worked at at a previous company, and she ran uh, the largest REO uh, unit here in Bakersfield, the gal uh, that was selling. I think she sold like 450 REOs that year, and she was wow. in charge of 14 uh, people. And so, so I knew – The transaction process. Yeah, so man. So I – yeah, exactly. But yet she was also getting paid, I think, 24 bucks an hour, and I couldn't afford that at the time. So what I did was I, I actually uh, wrote out a three a one three five year business plan, and uh, and and 
invited her to, to coffee and she finally gave me the, the, the time and, and we sat down. I shared that with her. Told her all I can afford is 12 bucks an hour right now, but I will get you up to 24 again if you, if you run with me. She, she quit her job. She jumped on board, learned the systems quickly. And uh, right now she's at about 24 bucks an hour. So that's awesome. <laughs> Winning. Yeah. Yes. But uh, yeah, uh, back to MREA. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a firm believer in about probably 70% of the system, you know. Um, uh, <clears throat> so yeah, first hire was, was uh, EA. Now she's an uh, operations manager, of course. Um, uh, second hire were the uh, coordinators. But, um, you, you know, I, I, I don't believe in the buyer agent, listing agent role. I think yeah, that... Uh, it, Everybody should be both, you know, and I want yes. them to have that ability to, you know, if they're at a buyer consultation to where they're like, oh, but you got to list your home. Hold on. Let's press pause and let me go grab a listing agent. <laughs> right? That's so true. It's Don't such a bullshit thing. It is, man. You know, and plus they want, they want that, uh, they want that ability to do yeah, that. They, they feel in contact too. They, and they feel empowered, you know, and mm -hmm. I want them to feel that empowerment. So, um, That's yeah. It's also when, when Gam Gam is going to sell her house and you tell, you know, John, who is your listing agent. Sorry, John, Gam, you can't list Gam Gam's house. I'm the listing agent and my name's going to go there. He's going to be like, ha, ha, yeah. I'm talking with you. I'm out. Yeah. I'm going I'm to go do my own thing. And you're just like, damn it. I just trained my freaking competition because my ego got in the way and I didn't let the person be a full agent. You're, dude, you're still yeah. getting paid. Who yeah. cares? Yeah. I took my name off of everything immediately too because I didn't want them to think that you know, they had, to, they were working for me. I want, I, you know, we changed it into a company name. Mm -hmm. So that way they feel, you know, they feel like they're just working for the company, which they are. They're not working for me. I just work with them. Yeah. We actually, we co-list everything with all of our agents. So our name's on there. Their name is on there. And it's not like the Greg McDaniel, Terry McDaniel, Chris Callahan, you know, team is the McDaniel Callahan team. So there's no first names. It's more of a brand than anything else. Yeah. And people are okay with that. I mean, I have, hold on, if I can do this. And you know the the only the best brands in the world have six syllables in the name. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so like Midori's card right here, you know, she, her brand is right next to our brand, and she's very comfortable with it. And I knocked down all of her cards. She's gonna be very upset. She's very neat. But you know, it that it, I I agree with you. I mean, giving people the ability to be a full agent, but yet have the support of a team behind them. You know, so if they have a question, thought, theory, or concern, or if they go and totally screw the pooch, you can catch them before they go splat when they hit the ground. You can pick them up, swoop them, protect them, protect yeah. the deal, protect the clients, and everything else. Yes, sir. I agree, Greg. It's like uh, let's jacket. talk about it's the, gold jacket. The, back to the uh, the daily schedule and kind of what 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 your expectations of the agents are, especially since they're allowed to do both what what are your expectations of your agents and how do you hold them accountable oh dude that's a loaded question Matt. um <laughs> so you know man i mean i gotta tell you we're we're, we're kind of like the wolf of wall street without the drugs and hookers so god damn of, it that's no fun yeah i mean you know <laughs> isn't that uh, the point of the wolf of wall street <laughs> yeah. the, the hookers and the yeah, drugs it's the pg version so uh <laughs> anyways you know we uh you know it's it's mandatory that everybody's in the office by 8 30. Uh, it's mandatory that everybody's on the phones by nine. Uh, That's awesome. Yeah, so we we're, it's one big room. We're in about twenty two hundred square feet here with twelve agents, but um, uh, you know it's a bullpen is all it is. And so um, you know everybody's typically up between standing up between nine and eleven or nine and eleven thirty prospecting for new business, mm -hmm. and that's what we expect. And I I got to tell you the accountability is so high to where if you know. If so and so is not on the phone and everybody else is, they're like, get on the freaking phone, quit goofing off. You know what I mean? So that's awesome. That takes the that takes the pressure off me a little bit. Yeah. Um, but you know, we we use uh, we have a number analyzer uh, that's attached to each agent, so they have to input their numbers once a week, um, oh. and, and then we in every single Monday morning, similar to um, uh, to Jeff Cohn. You know, we we uh, we sit down at uh, nine a.m. We have an hour sales meeting. We go through each and everybody's numbers. Um, we also tie. Uh, two agents uh, together as accountability partners, and they have to share what their what their goals are, what their weekly goals are, and then they have to announce whether or not they accomplished that goal or if they didn't. And I, you know, everybody's got to put skin in the game. So um, there's an agent Ed here in the office that has 500 bucks that he's going to make 50 uh, 50 contacts and two listing appointments, which he hasn't. And today is Friday, so you know somebody's going to be 500 dollars richer, I think. Lee, did, did someone did, did you air on Facebook Live or did someone in your office air your office meeting a couple of weeks ago or something like that? Yeah, yeah, we sure did, Greg. Yeah. Dude, I was fully watching that. I, I was sitting there going, I fucking love this guy, man. This is <laughs> this is the type of thing I want. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it, it, I tell you what, it's uh 
it, we try to keep the energy up high, Greg, you know, and, and that's important to us. And so, and this is another um, little situation that I've learned along the way is that we hire, we had two seasoned agents when we first started on March 17th of last year. Mm -hmm. Those agents lasted for about two weeks because we implemented all uh -huh. these new accountability processes. Yep. And, and you know, you got to learn the script. Sorry. Mm -hmm. And they looked at us like, you know what, we're not doing that. And so basically we, uh, we wound up taking them out of the, out of the scenario. And then we wound up hiring, uh, along the way, 12 new brand new agents that the, the oldest real estate agent that's on our team right now is going on a second year. The oldest? Um, Yes, or oh, seasoned. I'm sorry. Yeah. He's not oh, I'm like, huh? <laughs> yeah. um, He's a little yeah. little baby, you know. Got, got going on. It's, it's like Matt's kids. Little right. short little things. <laughs> little short little uh, fat things. <laughs> little wood dinter bastards they are. Yeah. Um, but no, I, I mean, I really was impressed though. The energy that your team had. I mean, they legitimately were supporting each other. They had each other's backs. They were excited about their numbers. They were hitting them. They were. I mean, you were up. You you did a phenomenal job. I was seriously impressed about the, the way that you were leading the meeting. It wasn't bored, boring, or dry. You weren't condescending to people. You were supportive of lifting you are encouraging yeah. that's the time that's the type of person i want to work for you know well, and that's what everybody now, i knew you were gonna say that <laughs> <laughs> well, now, I, you know i i think it's important i mean we don't we don't allow donuts in the office oh thank uh, god for, for diabetes me. matt your kids yeah. can't work there yeah matt, your kids can't work there <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, exactly uh, no vendors are, are welcome to the meeting because we don't want to spend a half an hour awesome. you know, pitching vendors uh, yeah. If anybody's going to jump on board, it's going to be one of the lenders that we're in business with, which we have two, and they give they get about ten minutes up, on, you know, in front of the group to build that rapport. So that's about it. Yeah, that's awesome. Get the the vendors are such a waste of time. Yeah. Managers try to bring them in so that they can offer new cool things to the agents. That's bullshit. I mean, they can yeah. find that anywhere. Okay, you, in an office meeting, look, I don't want to. I love you guys. I work with you guys, but I sure shit don't want to sit here and talk to you guys <laughs> because my money is being made out here, not yeah. in here with you. I mean. The uh, you guys you're familiar with Muscle Milk, uh, the workout supplement. Mm -hmm. So Greg Pickett um, is the founder of that. He he and his wife Penny live on my parents' street, and <clears throat> I've told this story several times. When Greg and Penny started out, they do it exactly what you guys are doing right now. He, he, I mean, every person in that company was required to be on the phone, outbound calling at 9 a.m. till 12. It, the, we could be attacked by aliens and a massive earthquake has swallowed San Francisco, you're still making outbound calls. At 12, then you deal with all the fires and everything else that you're dealing in a typical business day. But yep. his business blew up. He was like doing like four or $500 million or some astronomically large number in, in, in volume because mm -hmm. of that one act, that yep. one consistent act. Yeah, and Greg, I, I tell him, you, you guys can go home at noon. If you guys don't have any appointments after 12 o'clock, but, but yet you, you made your, your daily goal of contacts, go home, it's okay. But if you haven't, then you got to come back to work. But see, yeah. this is the other thing that I've noticed is that we've got a guy, Jose, here in, here in the office that started our company three months ago. Um, with our onboarding process, we make him go for no for an entire week, meaning they got at least uh, prospect and contact 60 people a day for a whole week and be told no. Awesome. Yeah, and so the guy gets conditioned quick, and he quit his job making 63000 bucks a year as a FedEx driver, uh, convinced him to quit. He looked at me during the headlights, so he did it. <laughs> yeah. uh, but he, but he did what I told him to do. And so, ninety days later, here we are today. Uh, he's already closed three, and he's got seven listings on, uh, as of today, and he's got two listing nice. appointments this week. And so, boom! Nice. Three that's what. That's straight. That's drop, Mike. <laughs> You know, <laughs> but but see, Lee, now, what, what you are you trying about, to convince your FedEx driver to quit and join your team? What, like, I, that's the story that I want you to tell. Is oh, like, God. where did these twelve agents coming from? And are you just randomly going out around town convincing people to quit their jobs? <laughs> you look unhappy. <laughs> so, so real estate? The two people that you've talked about that you've joined your team, you've literally talked them into leaving their company and joining you. I have. I, I actually <laughs> that, that should prove that house. you're like the best salesman in the world, right there. <laughs> I, I sold one of their houses, Matt, and uh, and he had about eighty thousand dollars equity. Uh, told him to quit his job and making one hundred twenty grand a day as an outbound sales agent for a software company here in town. Uh, told him, uh, okay, boom, you got eighty grand equity. We're gonna sell your home. We're gonna put you in an apartment. You're gonna come in and and just shadow the, the company until you actually get licensed, which he did. He just got licensed about a month ago, and he's got two listing appointments this week, and he's slowly rolling. But again, that ninety day process hasn't kicked in yet. Yeah, but that's okay. doing what you're but, doing. 
But yeah. it does take that 90 day process. I mean, that's what people don't understand. You have to grind it out hardcore. I mean, it's like yeah. kind of like starting off at a, at a stoplight in fifth gear. It's slow as shit in the beginning. But once you ramp up, dude, you're just poof, you're yeah. out of there. Yes. You know, just don't downshift into fourth or third. It's going to fuck your shit up. <laughs> 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 All right. So what's uh, what's your onboarding process look like in terms of training them, getting them up to speed? Uh, are you providing transaction coordination for them, by the way, before we get into that? So are they just focusing on the sales end? Because everything else is taken care of, or do they work their own deals? Uh, as far as TCing their own their own transactions, no, everything's uh, provided for them. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. So, so really, your onboarding process consists of sales skills, getting mm -hmm. on the phone, getting them into the into the appointments and stuff like that. So, what's uh, what's your training program look like for the agents? So it's a thirty day process. Uh, you know, week one is uh, you know I, I have them look at the scripts and start picking a prospecting script to to run, which I want to internalize by day thirty. Gotcha. So um, the, the also, one other thing, the listing presentation has to be internalized on day 30. So if they don't have a listing presentation internalized, then we don't have them. Uh, they're not allowed to go on listing appointments, basically, right. which right. I want them to do. So uh, week one, basically learn, learn the systems. We introduce them to uh, the, the Boomtown system isn't uh, given to them until day 90. Um, really? so yeah, we don't want to be like a silver platter company. We don't, I don't, that's mm -hmm. kind of like a caveat to working with us and proving mm -hmm. yourself after 90 yeah, days. So, right. um, you know, I, I want to, I want uh, boomtown or inbound internet leads to be a secondary, um, option for income for them, but I want them to learn how to fish before I start feeding them, I guess is the best oh, way to put it. So mm -hmm. true. You have got to do that. Otherwise they will be dependent on you for the rest of their you know, professional careers. Yep. They've never been able to go out and actually make it happen because they they've never needed to. No, no. And that's it, the yeah, yeah. So basically, we're, we're just, I mean, yeah, we'll, we'll find out how these, when, when the next market correction comes, it's going to clear a lot of, um, a lot of those agents out. Oh we're man, man, I cannot, it will be very sad. I could not agree with you more. I mean, and it's right around the corner. Mm -hmm. and so I think when the market was hot for these past four or five years, there's a lot of folks out there saying, Ooh, you want to join my team, jump on my team. I'll, I'll, I'll get a boomtown system. We'll get a couple lenders to help us out. Uh, but when the skills have to kick in and those agents become starving little babies mm -hmm. and they turn to the lead agent, that's when things are going to get a little gnarly for that team. And, and it's unfortunate for the agents that are below that lead agent because, um, you know, they're going to have to either find a new home to go to or learn the skills necessary to actually, stay afloat, you know? No, it's yeah. totally true. I mean, Midori is the same quality of agent that you hire on your team. I'm so impressed and proud of her because she's 25 years old. She doesn't know shit about a house except for she lives in it. Um, <laughs> and, you know, and, I mean, I pick on her, but she's amazing. Um, she, I dropped her in the deep end with boots on and I taught her, I told her, gave her a script, ran the script with her. She got proficient with it. I sat by her for an hour and then I, I literally walked out of the room for 45 minutes. And my whole goal was to see, is she going to sink? Or she's gonna swim and she's gonna fight and she's gonna get better at this. Came in, the girl's crushing it. The girl yeah. comes in on her own time now just to do cold calls. Like if she has 10 minutes, she'll jump on the mojo dialer and do cold calls. Wow. That's the type of agent that will make it. Yeah. The agents that you have will be the ones the type that, that make it. There'll be there's another individual that's coming to mind right now. And no, it's not you, Matt. Um, is the type of person <laughs> <laughs> that you know, all, Craig, I should always be on your mind. Like, you're about to say something horrible about somebody, then you're allowed to think about somebody else. But you should, I should always be on your mind. We're pretty close. As, as my understand. business partner and one of my closest friends, yes, you were always on my mind. Right. But um, I was going to pick on you. That's why I guess my that's my role. So you're about um, to specify that you're not talking about me. And I'm not talking about you. Horribly about, negative. Okay. About someone else, and this is this individual who I know. Um, hasn't progressed through their career in the last two years, no matter how much other people have tried to help this individual. So this other, this, this person is going to have to go bye byes And because you can only take time with people who are willing to grow and grow your business and help you grow your dream and help them achieve their dreams. If they're going to use you just to float along in life, rip cord, plop, go splat on ground. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So back to 30 day uh, onboarding though, because I think I got two week one week two is oh. the go for no week. So, for those next seven days, it's got to be 60 contacts a day, not dial right, but 60 contacts, mojo, triple dialing. Does, uh, does a message count as a contact or just a human-to-human -human conversation? Human-to-human -human contact. Can't be the, uh, the, the kid saying, hey, ask your mom yeah, and dad if you want to buy a average, home. What's the average time it's taking them to get 60 actual conversations a day? That's four, to day. Five, four to five hours, yeah. I'm like, that's all day. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, but you know, awesome. what, what I want them to do is I want, I want to condition them to where, you know, after – 
their their 30 days are up i don't have to sit here and tell them what to do they know to go for no and they're okay with no too you know yeah, well it, it also expands their threshold so if you have them doing a mojo dialer for five hours then when they go to doing it three hours and they don't have to come back yeah. from lunch and hop on the dialer again that's a big difference than trying to take someone that's only done a half hour of calls and saying hey we're gonna hop on the phones for three hours today and they just mm -hmm. want to jump out the nearest plate glass window Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they probably sometimes do. Yeah. yeah. But you know, the, the thing is, is that, you know, the, with if they don't have time, and I know that you said, hey, look, if you guys don't have any time, you know, feel free and go home if you don't have any appointments. But they should be conditioned to the point where if I don't, if I haven't met it, then I should hit it and crush it on the second half of that day so that I will build my business even faster. I mean, hopefully that I'm, I'm pretty sure they have that mindset, but giving them that, that ability to, to go home is, is a good thing. But we keep interrupting you. All right. So week three. Okay, week three is buyer consultation. Okay. So we, we talk about the uh, uh, basically the buyer consultation. They need to role play it to at least three times that week with another agent or myself. Uh, just kind of get that, that part down. And then lastly, uh, week four would be listing presentation. They got to run it on me. Um, and then uh, basically I just critique them, take them to lunch, make sure. And then I try to take them out for dinner to see if, I, if they're married to crazy. Um, that's, you, you wait a minute. You wait until week four to do that. I know, right? Well, um, you know that that's part of the, the 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 closing, I guess, of the thirty days to to at least catch a lunch or a dinner with your spouse if I can. So, all right. So then, week I'm five, I'm assuming is um, it's over. Locking them in a room and uh, playing nothing but Metallica, and then oh, that'd be awesome. Is the waterboarding. Oh, I was going to say right. Then finally, they're ready to uh, take a listing appointment. Yes, sir. All right. That is interesting. I've, I've heard, so you talk about the dinner with crazy. I've, uh, just with a little bit of experience I have in the recruiting industry, like talking to a lot of the high level people, booking them on podcasts and stuff like that. That is one of the things that's, that they do like a high level recruiter. If they're, if they're courting someone, uh, that's in, that's a C-suite, like a, like a real executive level position, every single one, they always make sure they go out to dinner with their spouse. Well, let me tell you, Matt, I've had, I've had crazy once. Don't want it again. So I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, dude, batshit crazy. It can negatively affect them so fast because if bitch go off the rails, or you know he bitch go off the rails, whichever crazy it is, you know that's going to affect your bottom line. It's going to affect the morale in the office because it's yes. going to affect yeah. everything. Yeah. Now you need to nip that in the bud right away. No matter how cool that guy or gal is, if they married stupid, gotta go, homeboy. Yep. All right, so last question, at least for me, and then I'm sure Greg has something to say. But so my last question is um, just like when you, when you have that level of accountability and, and expectations of your agents, what, what's the flip side of that? How do you celebrate success and make them feel good about what they've done, good about themselves as a team, and, uh, and kind of build that unity? Sure. Um, <clears throat> well, you know, I, I guess one, one thought is we have a, a, a six-month cycle um, right going on right now that started June 1, but we broke them up with, you know, there's 12 of them. So we have six agents on a team. Uh, the team leader of each group is the top producer in the company. Um, and then it's their job to keep the morale up in their team. Now, whoever closes this year out uh, with more units sold, then I'm going to take that group out for a, a seven day cruise uh, while the other team can stay back and hustle for next year. Um, so that's one payroll, but every 90 okay. days we also do what we do. Uh, we trade a thousand bucks. And so, okay. um, each agent needs to cut me a check for a thousand bucks. I have, I cut them a check for a thousand bucks. And if they, uh, the goal is to have 10 open escrows in 90 days. So basically it's 3.3 escrows a month that you got to open. Um, <clears throat> but if they, if they open 10 escrows in 90 days, they keep my money. If they don't, I keep their money. So there's a little <laughs> pain involved as well. That's awesome. That's and now what's the percentage of them hitting their numbers and not hitting their numbers? I mean, is that, is, and that's probably a great indicator of who's going to make it, who's not going to, who's not right. Yeah. Long probably time. one out of 12 won't. Really? And then, and then the next 90 days, trust me, that one out of 12 will <laughs> <We'll> get <it>. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> getting their money back. <laughs> oh, that's funny. So, so it's kind of just a seesaw. You trade off you don't really cash it. You just kind of, it's, it's mentally gone. Or do you actually cash that check and then deposit it and then keep it? And then you know, that's the check you write to them next. And so now they go even after they get it back on the second month. On the 90th day, on the 90th day, I either cash it or they cash it. Okay. 
That's yeah. awesome. That's, and I hope that everybody that's, that's watching this either live uh, or on the replay, you guys are really listening to what Lee's saying. He's using financial incentives, also, you know, goal incentives. And gamification, and, and yeah. Gamification 100% to the people because you found that that's what motivates them. I mean, the, the seven-day cruise is amazing. I mean, you, you keep on, Lee, you keep talking about go for no. We both know we love that. We both love that book, right? Sure. Do you, do you give the, the award, the coveted award of who got shot down the most? <laughs> That's a good one. I haven't though. I mean, honestly, you should be proud of the nose that you get. So I, I, I that might be an idea for next Dude, year. For sure. Go down to the award shop and buy like the pimping, like biggest, baddest, coolest award you can ever possibly imagine. Be like, all right, you get this, the most, most f offs ever, you know. And then just they get to put that on their desk. But I, I'm, I almost guarantee you that whoever has that award is going to have the most deals award. As yes, well. sir. Yep. You know what? I'm going to go and go down and get my own f off award. And give it to myself every month. It reminds me of I worked in the office years and years ago. This is when I was working uh, with my, one of my good buddies, and uh, we had a slightly different award. And oh it God! Was, uh, it was called the Douchebaggery Award. <laughs> you found that sitting on your desk when you came back from lunch. You knew you pissed somebody off. Uh, I'll, have to find, I'll have to find one of those and maybe send that over to you, Greg. That'd be fun. Or maybe you can have like a, a a jackass award with a donkey's ass on a trophy or something like that. That's awesome. <laughs> That is awesome. We got it. We have got you guys. Anyone's listening to this, if you guys can message me or Matt or Lee and give us ideas of maybe something that you guys see, you've used, you've seen used, or you know of that's in that realm, I will buy one for my team, for myself to grow it. Lee, if you do the same thing, and then Matt will just give one to you. How's that? Oh, thanks. There you go. <laughs> Love it. All right. So. <laughs> well, let's close out with this. We'll get to the McDaniel challenge in a second. But uh, oh, God. so we remind everyone of where you're at and what's the best way to get in contact with you. Just, first of all, just to connect, uh, which I know Facebook is a great place for that. You're doing some Facebook lives and some fun stuff. But uh, and then what's the best way to reach out to you if they have a referral for you in your area? Yeah, no doubt. Um, my, uh, you can reach me by phone, Matt, at 661-213-6857. Uh, I'm local here in Bakersfield, California, which is the Central Valley. Email is Levon, L-E-V as in Victor, O-N, E as in boy, A-R-R-I-S-O-N at gmail.com. Uh, you can connect with me on Facebook, uh, Lee Barrison. I think I'm the only one on Facebook with that name, so it uh, shouldn't be hard to find. And uh, yeah, send me any referrals. If I can do anything to create value for anybody out there, man, just reach out. I'd love to help. Yeah, and it's very obvious that you have that that attitude. So if, if somebody does have questions about your team or the you know Boomtown or whatever, I know you'd be happy mm -hmm. to uh, to answer them. Easiest way it sounds like for that kind of stuff is just connect on Facebook and shoot you over a quick message. So uh, yeah, and then uh, Greg on the McDaniel challenge. Um, God forbid somebody be a September of 2017 kid. Um, I don't even know. Like that's that's beyond. Like that that's you know it's not just that they're with my fat obese diabetic lacto over you know vegetarian kids or whatever they are. They, they're they're just some messed up kiddos. Denting, man. denting tile floors everywhere. Oh, um, cracking so tiles. Cracking tiles. Yeah, I mean they're with they're with that one guy from Lee's team that didn't hit like their 90 day goal. Like that's who they're with. <laughs> oh, if they're booking God. stuff for 2017. He's a stinky guy. I know him. Yeah. Uh, woo. Nah, whoever he is, I'm totally sorry, man. <laughs> <laughs> We're just totally messing with you. I know. We, did, we don't know who they are, and it changes every time, but we totally threw them right out of the bus. Yeah. <laughs> and now we just take that little clip out and be like, see, Matt and Greg are talking about yeah. you. Yeah, exactly. Like that. exactly. Uh -huh. Like I'm talking about you, man. <laughs> so uh, McDaniel Challenge, really quickly, a good uh, shout out to Jen Fishman. What up, Jen? She's in San Diego down near you, Matt. Um, dude, she said something very, really, really, really cool. What we were talking about, I just remember this when we were talking on the wife popped in my brain but not only is she a big fan of our show her dad who is in, in insurance is a big fan of our show and i and i have and i have a, a mcdaniel challenge with an insurance guy and another guy that the mcdaniel challenge is not even in real estate oh, wow. and i'm just like we really got something here hmm. okay mcdaniel challenge for all of y'all that have been, been under a big ass rock for the last you know couple of years uh it is an hour to two hours 100 percent free coaching you guys it is you me uh we get on a call at 6 p.m pacific standard time again i'm gonna utter these words it's free there's no strings attached a lot of people get caught up on this oh, how much does it cost i'm like it's free bitch yeah. i said it three yeah, times we don't, on the pitch. Coaching. We don't have any <laughs> no. products we don't have a bunch no. of stuff that we're pushing no. And so, guys, right now, um, I'm booked out. Whoops, wrong calendar. Uh, where's my other calendar? 
bitch, come here. Um, so it, it, it is literally August 23rd. And it's probably going to change. You're probably going to be probably a September kid by the time I get down to answering the emails and the text messages I have waiting for me. But guys, if anything that's stopping you, blocking you, hindering you from becoming and living the life of your dreams and you, that you deserve, please, for the love of Christ and all that's holy on, on this earth, um, you know, get a hold of me. Everyone that does this, I'll donate $1 to Matt's Diabetic Kids so that they can overcome their, their crippling disease. <laughs> Thanks, Craig. Invisible <laughs> fake kids appreciate it. Oh, I, I feel like that guy with like soft music playing behind me. Just twenty nine cents a day. Just will save this baby's life. Just twenty nine cents a day. So it's just like just sign up today, and it will save Matt's babies from denting one more floor. <laughs> But it's a uh, it's it's a lot of fun, guys. We get on the call and we just have we just wrap and have a good time. Uh, call me on my cell phone. Actually, text me on my cell phone. It's it's a lot easier for me to track everything, guys. Nine two five nine one five nineteen seventy eight again. Nine twenty five nine fifteen. 1978 or message me on Facebook. It's a very good way to get, get a hold of me there. I'm going live on Facebook on multiple channels. So follow me, guys. Lee, what is she doing behind you? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think she wanted to be on camera, Greg. I don't know. You, you, you oh, nice. think she like dove down low and like. No. <laughs> <laughs> Ow. That is um, but follow me on Facebook, guys. I'm out of friendship uh, it was spots, so follow me. I'm going to be doing live. I go live every single day. I do live circle prospecting in the lead gen scripts and objection page. Um, and I'm also going to do, be doing a video a day starting yesterday. Today's my second one on something that's informational based that you can then take, retain, and go give it and pass it on to your clients as maybe something of value. So if that's fun, you guys want to kind of see some of our listings up here, just follow me. Come hang out with me. Talk with me. Message me. And let's get you on the, on the uh, McDaniel challenge guys i do this because i absolutely 100 without a doubt love each and every one of you and i know that without a doubt you guys deserve what you want in life and i just being a third party guy i'll be able to help you guys maybe see something you don't see yet in your life that might be able to put you on the right track um the testimonials are, the testimonials are starting to roll in of the people that are have taken this challenge and they have put into action what we've talked about and they're getting phenomenal results so stop stopping yourself guys you guys deserve everything you guys want that's right. Super. That was a long winded one. More than others, I'm sure, but that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> I, have to, I have to give you a hard time. All right. Jesus. So, right, <laughs> subscribe to the show on YouTube, iTunes, and Stitcher. Um, Lee, you mentioned Jeff Cohn. You, you've gone through Jeff's workshop in Omaha, right? Yes, sir. So if anybody's interested in doing that, where Lee actually got to see all the systems and stuff that we do uh, in Jeff's flagship office in Omaha, you can go to EliteRealEstateSystems.com. You can check out the workshops there. And then, like I said, our website, McDanielRealEstateSystems.com. You can check out the farming training. You can check out Greg's favorite scripts. All that good stuff is there. And uh, as always, we have some great interviews set up for next week. I have no idea who they are right now. I'm not <laughs> so we'll miss that I have no idea. Show. <laughs> Total brain fart. But yes, already. That's right. Guys. All right. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us and have a great weekend. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs>